Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over today's NBA slate. First of all, I apologize for my absence uh, the last several days. Actually, I don't apologize for it. I was away, so I was unable to do any videos. So I figured I would come on on this Saturday. Uh, this is not normally what we do. Uh, usually these are reserved for the week, but I'm kind of juiced up to get back in there. So I'm going to do uh, an NBA slate preview for this evening. Um, and again, when I like to do the uh, NBA slate previews by myself, rather than going game by game, I'll take a very quick look at what the games are. And then I'm going to do a, a top-down look uh, using my true DFS sheets. Now, again, these are sheet, these sheets are usually only available to uh, true DFS premium subscribers. So if you want, you know, access to these more often, you'll please go to truedfs.com and, and join. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it costs right now, um, but there's a, a very good deal to integrate with SaberSim as well, and we'll get into that. Anyway, uh, that's enough of that. Let's get into this. We'll take a quick look at the games, then we'll get into the players. Then what we're going to do is build a couple of lineups using SaberSim uh, to see what the you know what the builds would look like if the slot if the slate blocked now, which of course it does not. All right, so it's pretty full slate here. You have one, two, three, four, five. It looks like 10 games or something like that. Just kind of eyeballing the totals. You have, I don't know, a 230, a 235, a 230, a 230. The Sacramento-Minnesota game, 236. Uh, another 230, another 230. The Utah game's only 223, but with Luka out, there's probably going to be a lot of value coming from that. And then you have Portland-Toronto, 230. So... Your quick, you know, 10,000 foot view of the slate leads me to believe that there's a lot of different ways that you can go. Um, it's not going to be one game that kind of dominates the discussion. Although, again, I, I imagine that the you know, Luca being out and the value that that provides is going to be uh, probably what determines uh, <laughs> what determines the slate determines how you attack the slate and that's probably where the best values are going to lie so let's take a look at my sheets and then we will see what it actually looks like um okay so i'm rating all these guys by well a lot of different metrics uh well you can list them by salary you know, whatever fantasy points points per dollar but we're going to work with is this sheets value score which for those of you that have not been uh, following these sheets for a while, this is my kind of combination score of both fantasy points and point per dollar that I think does a pretty good job of, um, of normalizing, you know, the, 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 when I say normalizing, when you have three K guys, they're, they're more likely to have a good point per dollar rating. Um, however, you need a lot of fantasy points to win. So where a 3K guy at five times his salary is going to get you 15 fantasy points, that's kind of okay. I'd much rather have a, you know, a $10,000 salary guy, you know what I mean, that's going to get 4X or maybe not 4X, but, but, but maybe 4.5X because, yes, it's nice to have value, but you still have to have the upside of, of having a lot of fantasy points. So the sheets value score is a really nice thing that, you know, I've taken from other sports and other, other formulas that, that I'm very, very happy with. So taking the quick look at the slate, I, I was expecting to see something different. I was expecting to see just basically all of the Dallas. And I guess that is sort of true. I mean, you rate these by sheets value score. You're seeing a $7,400 guy, Spencer Dinwiddie, being at the top of the value score ratings. That is very rare. I mean, almost always uh, you have the highest price guys, or at least close to them, being the highest sheets value score. So normally you would see guys like Sabonis, Tatum, Lillard, LeBron, guys like this at the top. So because you have these kind of middling guys um, and this cheapo here, Powell, rating, uh, you know, really on top of the sheets value score ratings, these four are really, really strong plays, Okay. Um, the ownership kind of you know, uh, supports that assumption, but make no mistake, when you have guys that are below 10K that are out value score ranking, the guys like Sabonis and, and these guys that are that much higher, these are very, very good plays. So that's the first thing that I would note 
is that if I were starting kind of like this hand-built lineup and I didn't care too much about ownership, this is where I would start. I would start probably with Sangoon and Powell and then Dinwiddie and Chris Paul. And, and fortunately, um, well, two of them are center only, so you'd have to use up a utility with one of them. And then you could screw around with the with with Spencer Dinwiddie. You could put him at, at, at shooting guard and Chris Paul at point guard. So that's probably where I would start. Um, the next thing, again, I like to look for is other guys that are kind of low sal lower salary guys that are up in this value score rate ratings. And I'm looking at Paul George. Gresh just looks like a good play. Aiton looks like a good play. Which is kind of interesting, you know, Aiton and 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 Chris Paul, both in the same team. Um, so they, they correlate pretty well. And the other thing about it is because one of them is a point guard and the other one is a center, they don't kind of take from each other's uh, fantasy points all that much. You know, you're going to have, obviously, you know, one guy scores, the other's not scoring. But it's very likely you can get a Chris Paul to eight and assist or, you know, things like that. So, and they're not fighting for the same types of fantasy points, you know, Aiden's fighting for the rebounds. Chris Paul is shooting, fighting for the assists and the steals or whatever. So uh, I think those are two good guys to pair together. So if you wanted to at least start thinking about something, maybe something like Chris Paul and Aiden together might be kind of a good way to play. So those two, and then Dinwiddie, Sangoon, Powell, these are the guys that I'm kind of looking at, you know, in the absence of, you know, ownership. Now again, ownership is kind of a big deal, um, and that's why you kind of help helps you Sabersim because Sabersim, when it builds its lineups, it will assume some kind of ownership fade. When I kind of go through these sheets, I'm coming up with the best plays, but they're usually going to be, if not the most popular, at least close to it. So that is something to to keep in mind. Another thing to look at before we kind of start building is the other way to rank them. That's your traditional points per dollar. And what I'd like to do is is with that is see like what the point per dollar rating is. In other words, if you're getting value guys that are above, you know, well, at least above 6X, but if you get one above 7X, those are very, very difficult fades. Um, and what it also does is allow you, it allows you to spend up for some studs. Um, it, it creates kind of the stars and scrubs type environment, where if you don't have that type of value, then it's probably going to be more middling. So I'd like to do that to see what's up. And I do see that both Dwight Powell and Josh Green um, rate really, really strongly because, you know, obviously because Luca is out. So uh, this is uh, this is pretty strong. Other guys we already saw, um, Dinwiddie, very strong play. And another thing I like to look at is, you know, the inverse of the Sheets value score analysis. Like the Sheets value score analysis, I was trying to find cheap guys that rated really high on the Sheets value score. Here, I'm looking for expensive guys that rate well points per dollar. So you still see Dinwiddie kind of showing up in both metrics, but now you're going to get even Tim Hardaway, Chris Paul again, Cam Johnson as another Phoenix guy. So that's yet another Phoenix guy that you can kind of stack up here. So just even without even building, without even looking, you can kind of see what's up, you know, the Phoenix the Dallas, that's where the majority of the value is going to come from. Precious is an interesting case here because he is a center. And, you know, we mentioned that Sangoon was a good play. And you can only play two of them between Sangoon and Powell. So if you play Precious here, you know, you might, you know, that that's kind of a decent pivot. It's going to get you, you know, much, I don't say much different. It's still 17% ownership, but it's going to get you somewhat different. So, you know, Dwight Powell, it looks like a great play, but there have been times where Dwight Powell has disappointed as well. So uh, Precious could rate to be um, a decent pivot. And you also see Chris Boucher, a pretty decent point per dollar play from Toronto. So you're adding Toronto value to the mix here. So we have, what do we have? You have Phoenix, you have Dallas, you have Toronto. These are kind of the, the teams that keep showing up. And then before we build, let's again remind us of what these kind of expensive guys were, that being Sabonis, Tatum, Lillard. The reason I mentioned it is even though these guys are rated higher on a value score basis, the fact that you can get those other good cheap point per dollar plays in means that you can play these Sabonises and Tatums and Lillard 
much easier than normal. Um, so what do you want to do? You want to make a hand-built lineup and then do Saber Sim? Yeah, let's do it. So we'll put this off to the side and let's, we have to remember who those, well, those core plays were. So let's look at this. Let's put in, um, now again, this is all based on the information we have as of now, you know. So we're going to start with Spencer Dinwiddie. Remember, we put him in the shooting guard position. And then we went, we put Chris Paul in the point guard position. That was important. And let's put the the the, the, the best plays first at center. We won't put Precious in yet. yet. We'll put in um, Powell at center. And then we will go and put Sangoon in the utility. And then we will think. Okay. So we put these four key plays here, and now we want to think. We could spend the rest of our money on like a bunch of five fifty five hundreds, or we could we could spend the money on say Sabonis's and Tatum's and Lillard's, and then play more of a cheapo. Like for example, uh, let's go back to the board here. Um, we could play something like Josh Green. Um in addition to something like Sabonis, if we wanted to, okay? But I think this Tim Hardaway at 5,900 play is pretty good. And I think this Cam Johnson play at 5,500 is pretty good. Now we're asking for it because you're now we're getting three sons. Um, but let's just see, and we're also getting three uh, Mavericks. But let's see what that looks like. Let's put in uh, Dallas, put in... Hardaway here, and then let's put in just for funsies a third uh son, and that would be Johnson. So now we have actually, we didn't put an eight yet, did we? No, who do we want? Powell. Oh, it was Powell Sangoon? Oh, I see. So you couldn't play all three of those. That's that was the deal, it was Paul. It was more important to play Sangoon and Dinwiddie than it was to play Aiton. Okay, that makes sense. So now we could play, you know, either, well, you can't really play an expensive guy here. There's no real expensive guy you want to play anyway. So you pl probably play two other 5,500 guys. Now, what you could do, you know, and I think this makes somewhat sense, is maybe play a Utah guy. Right. Or maybe play a San Antonio guy or a Detroit guy, because, you know, in the absence of it being an incredible standout play in these two positions, you want to get at least some correlation where, let's say, the game goes to overtime. For example, you want to have guys on both sides. So what I'd love to do is play a Detroit or a um, or a San Antonio guy, even if they don't project quite as well. Let's take a look and see what's up here as far as those teams go. Um, we'll just rate my point per dollar. We're not going to get greedy here. So Alec Burks at forty five hundred. All right, that, that's 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 one thing you can do. Um, who, who's the team that Phoenix is playing? Oh, San Antonio. Or you could play Zach Collins. All right, that's that's not bad either. Um, that's pretty much all I see as far as good point per dollar plays here. Let's look at Sheets value score. Let's make sure I'm not missing anything. No, not really. So there's nobody that looks really good in San Antonio and nobody that looks really good in Detroit with respect to Sheets value score. Um, so maybe you play something like Alec Burks. Just as an example. And now you have 6,200, you could play kind of whoever you want. Okay. So now if you wanted to get greedy, not greedy, you want to go a different route, you can go to something like you know, like Precious over here instead of uh, instead of Powell. Saves you a little bit of money, and it saves you a little bit of ownership, right? Because he's going to be not as popular. Or if you wanted, you could go, uh, instead of saying Goon, you could play eight. And again, it's a little different, right? You're, you're, you're really committing to this Phoenix side of this, in which case you really probably want to get a San Antonio guy. Um, but this is another thing you can do, or you could take Burks out of this. And now we're still at 60 K per man. So 
this is what I'm going to be screwing around with is how different to get um, off of these cores like Chris Paul, Dinwiddie, and and uh, and then Powell and Ayton, uh, Powell and and Sangoon. How different to get off of that main core? Do I want to go to Ayton? Do I want to go to Precious? Do I want to go to Cam Johnson and overstack Phoenix? And these are the kind of the the back and forths I'm going to be you know playing around with my brain to hand build these lineups today. Uh, okay, now let's take a look at Sabersim and we'll see how Sabersim would approach the slate if it were happening right now. Now, again, this is hopefully going to be more of a lesson on process than in actual plays because, you know, probably by the time you, you, you're watching this, the slate may have jumped, you know, turned on its head already. Um, and there's all kinds of, kinds of injuries or other guys are starting that we didn't expect. So the projections are all different. But this is the process that I use to go ahead and build lineups. All right, so now let's uh, use Sabersim. And what we're going to do is upload the my projections to Sabersim. Now, you can do this directly from TrueDFS. Like, if you are a Sabersim subscriber, you can go ahead and, you know, you could access the TrueDFS projections within the Sabersim uh, app from TrueDFS. Uh, but here I'm doing it directly through Sabersim. So the projections are in, the ownership is in. Let's build, let's say, 150 lineups using their default, you know, uh, sliders slash settings. And let's see what kind of exposure we would get. I wonder if we would get as big of an exposure to those core plays as I think we would. Let's take a look. So it's a it's the same, but it's a little different. So Dinwiddie is basically locked. But now it wants to play these Josh Green guys a little more, you know, or even Jory Finney-Smith, um, which is a little different than the way I probably would have approached it, okay? Um, the other thing to kind of look at is what type of stack types it would come up with. So there's a good amount, like 15% of the lineups had four guys in it from one team, and one lineup here had five. Let's take a look at this, what this looks like. I mean... I'll tell you this, if this game goes to overtime, this lineup can 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 go, you know, can get places. But playing five guys from one team is 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 tough. I mean, it's tough. I mean, you, you're you're really asking to be fighting with each other for the same fantasy points if you're playing five. Um, but I mean, listen, I've built worse lineups than this one, by the way. I mean, what's good about the lineup like this, you'll have five guys from one team, which is not ideal, but you will have a high scoring run back from Utah. Which is which is what you want. Um, you have Kawhi in this lineup. I probably wouldn't play Kawhi here, but it's going to be low owned. Kind of hard for me to ignore it. Anyway, this is one lineup out of 150. So those are, that's what I do. You know, I, I I hand build using my sheets the way that I just described, and then I'll use Sabersim to build my MME lineups. And then what I'll do is I might go in here and say, you know what, I don't really want 100 percent of these guys or Let's get rid of this filter, by the way. Um, now I want to look at all of them. Maybe I don't want 100%, uh, 70, 97%, 97% uh, Dinwiddie. So I will, you know, artificially reduce that. Maybe. Um, so that's it. You know, I, I I don't know if that was too slow or too fast, but it's it's literally my process for attacking the NBA. NBA uh, and it applies to this particular slate right now. But... It applies to all of them, honestly. Uh, and uh, that'll do it. Look for projection updates. If you're a true DFS subscriber, that'll usually come a couple of hours from now. And uh, hopefully this helps. Good luck.